American opposition. NBC's Kelly O'Donnell is watching it all for us this morning from the White House. Kelly, good morning. Good morning, Peter. This is an important morning for President Biden and his top priority of COVID relief. It did pass the House after two in the morning, but without a single Republican vote. And the package did not get every Democrat to say yes because of the scale of the spending in this package. But it is still important progress toward what could become the president's first legislative victory. A major development early this morning. The House passed the massive COVID relief package carried by Democrats' votes, with every Republican and two moderate Democrats opposed to the $1.9 trillion size of the package. This is a critical step forward for aid, like $1,400 direct checks and enhanced unemployment benefits. While the House included a federal minimum wage increase to $15, that is not expected to go forward in the Senate. Speaker Pelosi promises to try again. We will not rest until we pass the $15 minimum wage. On Friday, President Biden delivered a trust me message to build vaccine acceptance. The vaccines are safe. I promise you, they are safe and effective. With a third brand of vaccine on the way, the president visited a mega Texas vaccination center and met airmen on duty there to help. The Biden administration says it will give states more information on available vaccine supply to improve scheduling of shots, framing his plan as patriotic. This can be a great American achievement, being the only country in the world to reach 100 million shots in 100 days. Turning to foreign policy, President Biden made his first comments on the airstrike he ordered, putting Iran on notice. What message were you sending to Iran with your first military action? You can't get, you can't act with impunity. Be careful. And in a new interview, President Biden signaled a change in the U.S. relationship with ally Saudi Arabia. Friday, the administration released an intelligence report that finds the Saudi crown prince ordered the killing of U.S. resident and journalist Jamal Khashoggi. We are going to hold them accountable for human rights abuses, and we're going to make sure that they, in fact, and if they want to deal with us, they have to deal with it in a way that human rights abuses are dealt with. And Kelly, let's get back to the COVID relief bill passed overnight in the House. How long before Americans can start getting those $1,400 direct payments? Well, Peter, the goal is to have this completely wrapped up and signed by the president by mid-March. And that is tied to the expiration of the unemployment benefits that are enhanced at the federal level that expire on March 14th. So it moves to the Senate next, and progressives like Bernie Sanders and Ron Wyden are trying to figure out a way to use the tax code to incentivize raising wages. Not a straight minimum wage, but a way to encourage businesses to increase their wages. That's something that we'll see play out over the next days. Peter, Kristen? Kelly O'Donnell at the North Lawn this morning at the White House. Kelly, thank you. And also this morning, there is some